When you think about the modern cloud, scalable microservices, serverless functions, massive distributed systems, what do you think powers all of that under the hood? One programming language quietly powers much of it, Go, or as many call it, Golang. Back in 2009, Google released Go as a simple, fast, and concurrent alternative to bloated enterprise languages. Fast forward to 2025, and Go has gone from a niche Google experiment to what many now call the cloud's workhorse. In this video, we'll unpack why Go rose to dominate cloud infrastructure, why big players like Docker, Kubernetes, and Cloudflare are built on it, and whether Go is still the smartest bet for developers today. Let's rewind. Go was born inside Google. The challenge? Google engineers were drowning in slow compile times, complicated C++ systems, and Java verbosity. Rob Pike, Ken Thompson, and Robert Griesemer, legends in computing, set out to build something different. Their goals were clear. They wanted a language that was simple like Python, with readable, clean syntax. Performant like C, with compiled, fast execution, and concurrent by design, able to handle thousands of tasks at once, a necessity for web scale systems. That mix turned out to be perfect for cloud computing. While languages like Java and CNumber were built for enterprise monoliths, and Python was beloved but slow, Go was optimized for the new reality of distributed system. By the mid 2010s, Google wasn't the only company facing these problems. The whole industry was. Here's where Go really made its mark. Docker, launched in 2013, revolutionized software deployment, and it was written in Go. Containers needed lightweight concurrency and networking. Go delivered. Kubernetes, launched in 2014, became the orchestrator of the modern cloud, also written in Go. It scaled because Go's concurrency made scheduling and service discovery efficient. Infrastructure as code tools like Terraform and Pulumi, built with Go2. By the time AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud embraced containers and orchestration, Go was already the default choice. If you were building cloud tooling, you picked Go because it was fast to learn, fast to run, and portable across platforms. Another factor was static binaries. Unlike Java or Python, Go compiles down to a single binary. No runtime, no virtual machine, no dependency, nightmares. You could drop a Go binary into a Docker container, and it just worked. This simplicity was a game changer for cloud native software. While other languages needed tuning or heavy runtimes, Go was efficient out of the box. By 2020, Go was no longer Google's language. It had become the foundation for the cloud ecosystem itself. So why Go and not something else? Python dominated AI and scripting, but it struggled with raw concurrency and performance. Java and C Sharp remained enterprise giants, but felt too heavy for cloud native microservices. Rust emerged as a systems programming darling, praised for safety and performance. But Rust's steep learning curve slowed adoption. Go hit the sweet spot, fast enough, safe enough, and simple enough. Developers could pick it up in a weekend, teams could onboard junior engineers quickly, productivity skyrocketed. In 2025, cloud computing looks very different than it did in 2015. We've got AI workloads everywhere, edge computing, serverless, and billions of IoT devices streaming data. So why is Go still thriving? Concurrency at scale remains one of Go's killer features. Millions of lightweight threads can be spun up with ease, perfect for handling real-time data streams and serverless functions. Performance without complexity is another. While not as fast as Rust or C++, Go hits the 90% mark with 50% of the mental overhead. For cloud workloads, that trade-off is worth it. Then there's the mature ecosystem. From Kubernetes to Prometheus to HashiCorp tools, the Go ecosystem is now the backbone of cloud operations. If you're managing cloud infrastructure, you're touching Go whether you write it or not. Corporate adoption has solidified Go's place. Amazon, Google, Microsoft, 
and countless startups now officially support and hire for Go. It's no longer a niche skill, it's industry standard. And finally, stability. Unlike languages chasing constant syntactic evolution, Go keeps things stable. Teams can invest in Go code bases with confidence that they'll run for a decade. Of course, Go isn't perfect. Developers sometimes complain about its limited generic support, even after the 2022 update. Others find the language almost too simple, leaving out features that other modern languages consider essential. Yet, these trade-offs are part of what makes Go so consistent. By keeping things minimal, Go reduces complexity, which is exactly what teams maintaining global cloud infrastructure need. Another reason Go thrives is the community. In the early days, Go meetups and conferences were small, almost experimental. But today, in 2025, Go has one of the most active and professional communities in open source software. The language is stewarded carefully, with changes debated for years before inclusion. This deliberate pace builds trust with enterprises who don't want surprise. Let's not forget performance in real-world workloads. Benchmarks show Go consistently outperforming Python, Ruby, and Node.js in back-end services, while coming close to Java and even C++ in many networking scenarios. That balance of speed and productivity is why companies like Uber, Dropbox, and Cloudflare leaned into Go early, and why more companies keep adopting it today. And while Rust fans often tout memory safety as the reason their language should dominate, in practice, Go has proved good enough for many use cases. Its garbage collector has matured to the point where latency is low, pauses are predictable, and throughput remains high. For building cloud-native systems that need to scale fast, predictability is often more valuable than perfection. Put simply, Go remains the most pragmatic tool for cloud infrastructure in 2025. Go isn't flashy. It's not the fastest, or the most experimental, or the most hyped. But that's exactly why it won. In cloud computing, reliability, simplicity, and scalability beat cleverness every time. So when you deploy a container, spin up a Kubernetes cluster, or scale a serverless app in 2025, chances are there's Go code quietly running under the hood doing the heavy lifting. That's why Go became, and still is, the cloud's workhorse. Thanks for watching. What do you think of Go's rise in cloud? Do you think this was a mistake? Do you think, on the other hand, it was great once but no longer relevant in the age of AI? Leave your comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more techie talks from the techie shop. If you like this video, Watch this video here for more tech talk.